Hi, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to discuss the basics of working with Zoom. We'll learn how to create an account, how to join a meeting that you've been invited to, and how to create and host your own meetings. We'll learn about the requirements, both physical equipment for your computer and software setup that are necessary for running all of this. Now to get started, let's take a look at how to create an account. First we want to go to zoom.us and you can do this on your desktop computer, laptop, cell phone, or tablet. The hardware requirements will differ a little bit from one device to another, but we'll talk about that later on. Before we create an account, I do want to stress that you don't have to have an account to use Zoom. You can join a meeting that you were invited to, even without your own account. But for today's purposes, I want to show you how to create an account if you would like, as it is a free thing you can do. So here in the upper right, we see sign up, it's free. You see, I'll click on that. Now I already have an account, and we have one here at the library already, so I'm not going to create another one, but I will walk, walk you through this process. When you are creating a Zoom account, it will only ask you for two pieces of information, birth date and an email address. Once you have created the account and you're able to sign in, we can take a look at the other options that are available to change it to a for pay account where you would have more privileges, the ability to host longer and more frequent meetings, have more people at your meetings, things like that. But for right now, it's pretty basic. So I'm going to make up a birth date. And then I would put in an email address. Now again, I don't want to create a, another Zoom account here, but if I were going to do so, I would click sign up and then it would send a verification email to the address that I put in. And if you've been playing along with me and you filled in your own email address, once you click sign up, you have created that account and it's ready to be verified and ready to go. Now let's go ahead and sign in and work on joining a meeting that we've been invited to. There are two different ways you can join an existing Zoom meeting. In one, you've received an invitation and you have a link to follow. We'll do that one first. In the second situation, you have a meeting ID that you would like to follow along with, and you can use that to connect to a meeting that was publicly broadcast. For example, a school board meeting or something from a corporation or investment group or just a club that is letting a lot of people come to their meetings without it being invitation only. So we'll look at both examples of how you would do that. Let's start out with receiving the invitation. When you receive an invitation to a Zoom meeting, it will look something like this. Here's the email that was sent to me in this demo. We created a demo meeting for today. We have the time right there. And it has join Zoom meeting and the link that we would want to follow. So I would simply copy this and go to whatever browser you like and enter in the address to go to. Once you arrive there, it's going to ask you if you want to download and run Zoom. This is the first time that you've used it on your computer or your device this may come up. There it goes. It was running a little bit slow. Ah. Once you have downloaded this the first time, it will then open up automatically in the future. This can be uh, browser dependent, so if you have installed it on one browser, it may still require updates on another. Now, a couple of options that you will see here. Join with computer audio. If you want to do that, you would then test your speaker and microphone. Or you could join via phone call. This depends on how the meeting was set up by the person that created it. They will sometimes give specific controls where you have to either join by phone or have to join by computer audio, or sometimes they will allow you to choose depending on what you have available. Important to know, if you're not planning on participating in the meeting, if you're just planning on listening in or watching what's going on, you do not necessarily have to have a microphone to be able to do that. You would still need speakers if you wanted to hear what was happening, but if you're not going to say anything, you don't need a microphone. So I'm going to say join with computer audio. It says you are using the computer audio. And we have now joined the meeting. Now this is a demonstration meeting that I have created, and since I'm the one that's creating it, I'm also the one hosting it, so it is not opened up yet. But if this were a real meeting, we would then see the content appear right in the middle of the screen here. And we'll do that uh, together in just a moment when I show how to host a meeting. A few things that I want to show you here while we're waiting. So normally we would see the person that is talking appearing right in the screen, 
We see some information along the bottom that I want to point out that as a participant you can be involved in. One, you can mute yourself. So you can turn off your speaker at any time. So if there's a lot of noise in the background or you're talking to somebody else, you can click on that. And then other participants in the meeting will no longer be able to hear you. Similar to that, you can turn video on or off. Now the computer that I am sitting at does not have a video camera, so I don't have that option to turn it on effectively right now. But if you are using a smartphone or a tablet that has a video camera, or if you have a webcam on your computer, you can turn that on and work with it. Other things that we see here, participants, that's listing how many people that are in the meeting. Uh, right now there's just me. If there are more people, you'd see that number grow. And I can click this, and I can see the names of the participants on the side there. The chat options allow you to send messages to people in the meeting. And you notice here, you can choose to send it to everyone, or if other people are signed in, you can choose specific people that you want to send it to. Share screen allows you to share what is on your screen with other people that are in the meeting. This would be if you were, say, having an issue with your computer and you wanted the person that you were talking with to be able to see it, you could share your screen there. This is something that is controlled by the person that sets, uh, sets up the meeting in the first place and schedules it. They have an option whether or not to make this available for participants in the meeting. So that would be up to them. Record is something else that is often controlled by the person that schedules the meeting, but they will have the option of recording this meeting if they want to save it either locally on their computer or to their Zoom account. This depends on the settings of the accounts as to how much space they have, but if you're doing anything official, for example, the library's board meetings, we record those and we keep a record of them. So that's what that is for. And then finally, when you're ready to go, you can leave the meeting. So if I click that, I would leave the meeting. Before I do that, I do want to point out a couple other things in the controls here, especially for those of you that have family members that might be doing uh, education at home or if you're participating that, in that yourself. The raise hand option has become a very popular one for people that are, have large groups. As you might imagine, if you have 20 people in a meeting, if everybody is talking at once, it can be rather confusing. And so you can set up a system where you raise hand to indicate that you have something to say, and the moderator or the, or the scheduler of the meeting will unmute you and allow you to say something. So that's a nice little feature that's there. I'm going to click Leave Meeting, and then we're going to talk about how to create a meeting and how to host it. One more quick thing that I want to cover before we go into hosting a meeting is I would like to show how to join a meeting when you just have the ID. So if you didn't have this invitation, but say you had gone to an organization's website or their Facebook page and they had posted the meeting ID for an upcoming meeting that they had, you would see this number listed right here. You can take that and quickly make a copy of it, and then if you simply go to the zoom.us's website and join a meeting, it will ask you to enter in the meeting ID. You type in that ID or just paste it in and click join. And it will open up the meeting in the same way that it would if you had the actual link to it. It's again running a little slow for me. There we go. And you see this looks the same as what we had before when we were joining via invitation. So that's all there is to joining a meeting when you have the ID number instead of a direct email sent to you. Finally, I'd like to talk with you today about creating and hosting a meeting. We see here that I am signed into a Zoom account and I want to go over some of the basic options that we would see available to us here and then I want to walk through you, walk you through creating a meeting and start up the hosting of it. So, once you're signed into your account, we can take a look at the plans and pricing. This is where if you wanted to have more versatility than the basic, basic account allows, you could go through and you could purchase something a bit more advanced. Uh, you can see the listing of the features available, so the free accounts allow you to have up to 100 participants, 40 minute maximum group meetings, unlimited one-on-one -on -one meetings, and you can expand how long the meetings can be, uh, how many people can join them, how many sign-ins are available, and so on through all of these comparisons, all of these plans that are available to you. There are also add-on features that you can get where you can have larger meetings if you want to have very large groups, if you're doing uh, seminars where you had hundreds or thousands of attendees. And there are larger storage options that are available if you wanted to record a lot of these here. So there are many options that you can go with with Zoom, but we're going to stick with the basics for right now, and we're going to go back to just creating a meeting if you're ready to do that. So here on the left-hand side, 
we have our profile information. This is where you would update things like your email address, that sort of information that you would have here. But we're going to go to meetings. And you'll see a list of meetings that were held before with this account. If you want to create a new one, you would click schedule a meeting over here on the right. Now there are a lot of different options that are available for this. I could call this YouTube demo. I could put in a description of the meeting if I wanted to make it clear to whoever was joining it what this was about. If you have regular meetings, say there's a monthly or weekly meeting with your organization that you're part of, and you go through all of these options and you get them set the way that you like, you can create a template and you could then select that so that you don't have to go through every single option again. That's not appropriate for this demo. We want to learn about these things, but that could be a time saver for you in the future if you're using this on a routine basis. Next, we'd go through here and we'd choose when do we want this meeting to occur. So I could choose today's date, 6 p.m. I could change it to a little earlier or later. How long do I want the meeting to go for? Put in whatever time amount there. If it's a shorter one, I can move that down. Or I can make it a little longer, whatever is appropriate. What time zone is this taking place in? And is this recurring? Is this going to happen on a daily, weekly, whatever basis you would like? This will not be recur recurring. Do you require registration? You can check that if you want, that people have to sign up for it. That would not be appropriate for this demo. Meeting ID. Do you want to have it automatically generate a meeting ID, or do you want to use a personal one that people would have and would know to come back to? When it automatically generates it, when we create the invitation in a minute, it would just have an ID appear. Do you want to require a passcode? If this is something that you want to have only members of your organization join, then you might want to have a password. This would then be included in the invitation that was set out. If you wanted this to be accessible to the public, you would probably want to uncheck that and not have a password. The next option is waiting room. This is a way of restricting who enters until you approve it as the organizer of the meeting. If you uncheck this, when people join, they will go straight into the meeting. If you check this, they will go into the waiting room until you allow them in. Entirely up to you. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to uncheck this for now. For video, do you want the host to have video? Sure. Do you want the participants, participants to allow, be allowed to have video? Entirely up to you. If you're working with the public, you might be concerned about what might appear on that video, so you might want to have that off. But if you know everybody that's going to be involved in this, you want their faces to be able to come up, you want them to be able to share things, you might want to choose to have that on. The audio, we talked about this earlier. Do you want to restrict it to people who have to call in, only use computer audio, or both? In most situations, you'd probably be fine saying only computer audio, so you don't have to worry about people calling in and creating a phone number. And meeting options. Do you want to allow people to join before you do? So enable people to join right away. That, again, depends on your situation, whether or not you want that. Do you want people to be muted by default? So when they join, they're not immediately making noise, and you have to choose to unmute them, or they have to choose to unmute themselves. I'll do that, too. Only authenticated users can join. Remember earlier I said that you don't have to have a Zoom account to be able to join Zoom meetings. If this is checked, then you would have to have a Zoom account. This is something that Zoom would use if they're having if you were having issues with spam, or you had a lot of just... Uh, computer-based or people causing trouble joining it and you wanted to be able to track people that were joining your meetings, you might turn that on. And then do you want to automatically record the meeting? Do you want to have this recorded so that you can come back to it later? I'm going to leave that unchecked for today's example. And if you wanted, if you were not sure if you would be available to put in an alternative host, you can put in the email address of some other Zoom user that would be able to serve as the host in the situation that you were not. Now I'm going to click Save to create this meeting. And you would see is now would appear in the My Meetings list with your account. You can see the topic is listed there, learning to use Zoom, the YouTube demo. There is the meeting ID number. There's no passcode and no waiting room. This is the invite link. Now, if you wanted to send this to people, you could simply highlight this and copy and paste it, or you could click Copy Invitation, and it gives you all of the information involved in this. You'd copy meeting invitation says copy to clipboard, and you would then go to your email and send this to whichever people or list of people you want to be able to attend. Some more information about the meeting. These are all the things that we chose before. 
And here you see we could save this as a meeting template if we wanted to use this routinely, or we could delete this if I didn't actually want to host the meeting. Now just so we can see how people look when they appear on the meeting, I am going to, in a cell phone here, type in the meeting ID and join it. I'm now joining that meeting. And as the host, I will come over here to my meetings and I will choose start this meeting. I open the Zoom meeting here. There it goes. I have the choice again, join with computer audio. You're using computer audio. And now I'm joining with video. And you can see myself on the left there as the participant that has joined via cell phone. And here is the host. If I go to participants, there's Bloomingdale Public Library as the host, and then just the unidentified account from the cell phone that has joined. And that's me. I could turn off this video. And then it goes away. Or I can turn the video back on. And then it reappears. So that is how you would create and how you'd host a meeting. You'll see a lot of the same options that we have here. When you get more advanced with this, when you're doing um, large groups and you want to be able to interact with them, you'd see you have the breakout rooms where you can break people into smaller groups there. You can create polls. Again, we talked about the chat features. Now we actually have somebody else to send the chat message to. And you can see privately was sent from me to Moto there or to everyone. And then it appears for everyone. So those are some of the options that we talked about with Zoom. I hope these basics will get you started with it. If you have any further questions, please let us know here at the library. We're always looking to serve you in whatever way we can. We're hoping to add more of these little tutorials to help you with information from working remotely during these difficult times. If there's anything that you would like to see, please let us know. With that, have a great rest of the day. Bye.